So what are you making me? So, you're gonna get a mojito with a rosé twist. The second thing that you're gonna be enjoying is a French 75, but all pink. I'm obsessed with that. I really like French 75. I also like pink, so... I'm gonna make them yeah. and cover up any spills. Here for it. Right, so we're gonna start with mini tots. So, tall bass, mint. Ooh, it's almost like we've got five a day down at the front here. <laughs> this is like the super healthiest drink you can have. I remember drinking these at like 10 a.m. and I think that was perfectly allowed when I was in Cuba once. I can't tell you the last time I had a mojito, but I'm assuming it was somewhere on a beach. I imagine I was sweating and just needing something alcoholic. But I always like them because they're so refreshing. And I think you can actually drink quite a few of them, which again... Okay, so I've squashed up the mint in the bottom, that's called mulling. You start with that to make sure that the mint is all interesting for drinking and then you go straight to your gin. Gin? Yes. Usually you'd have rum in this, but with the rosé, the gin can be a little bit nicer. Especially if it's coloured rum, it's going to be a little kind of spicy or a bit overly interesting for someone's palate. I think I've only ever had them with rum, so a gin twist would be quite interesting. And you never shake a mini so It's all about stirring it in the glass. It doesn't need a cocktail shaker at any stage. And you just kind of build it up as you go along. One thing to absolutely always have in your cocktail cupboard is sugar syrup. It's on basically every good cocktails list. It's as simple as sugar and water, but making it at home is an absolute nightmare. We only need a bit of this, about 15 up in that glass. Now we're starting to kind of really feel quite much into it in here. The next thing we're going to need, and this is where you come in, uh, is a rosé. We need a still rosé for this. I can do that. Crack it open. You know what? Let's go little. You Let's go with 50 ml of rosé. Or 100 ml if you're feeling like it. I mean, that, that's a perfect 50 ml. <laughs> that is professional bombing skills right there. Next bit, lime juice. Big squeeze. You want kind of as much lime as you can get out of about a half a lime. A little bit more stirring. All you need now is ice up to the top and a bit of soda water for the fizzy kick. And you're on to a winner. Like when it's a very hot day today as well, so there is nothing that I actually want more than a really cold alcoholic beverage. Well then you're a for a treat, almost there. And I just get to drink this. You just get to drink it, yeah. This is the easiest day of work I've ever had. One that draws over heat off. That is delicious. That is actually <laughs> really delicious. I think the rosé is really nice in it as well. Like it's because it tastes a bit like rosé. Uh, so it also tastes a bit like gin. And that is your <clears throat> rosé meat on. That's yum. How about while you get the next one ready, I keep sitting on this. Yeah, you go ahead. This will get you this. I love that you're also cleaning up my kitchen. Like he's come here to make me drinks and he's cleaning up my kitchen. Okay, so next up, got the nice sexy tall glass out. This is like early evening drinks. It's that kind of, you know, eight o'clock-ish, it's been a hot day, but you're just starting to feel the edge getting taken off, and now it's time to move up to things that make you look a little bit like Bond, but also a little bit like you could go to a cocktail party. I'm slightly offended that Matt doesn't think I look like Bond all the time without a drink in hand, but I mean, yeah, what is it? It's also super easy to make. All you need, cocktail shaker. No ice going into the cocktail shaker, but you don't want it to be like super cold, because the cold comes from the ingredients. It's really straightforward. Gin, two shots. Does it matter that this is quite flavoursome gin? Well, you can do it kind of two ways. So you can have like something more floral if you have a rosé that is going to match it. You can also go to a kind of classic London dry style gin. So it really depends on preference here. Okay. It's, as long as it's white, clean spirit, it's not good. Next part, and this is where you might have to shop in, is you need some elderflower liqueur. Quite important to have in here because that is where quite a bit of your floral taste is going to And that's like Saint-Germain. Saint-Germain. That okay. is what you're after. A little bit of that in there, about half an ounce or so. Then you're taking lemon juice, absolutely standard, just squeeze it straight out of the lemon, pop that in there, and then you're just going to shake this together, no ice. Right, so yeah. once you have shaken, you're looking to fill up about half the glass with your base mixture. Then comes the fun bit of a rosé 75, because usually with a French 75 it is this and then topped up with champagne. What we've got here is two options. If we were going big and it wasn't a Wednesday, and the rest of the night is absolutely clear, it already looks exactly like I think champagne should look. Sadly, that's going to stay on ice, because today <laughs> we're going to use the I'm drinking it everyday option of classic Cremont. Because who doesn't have a pink French 75 every... In you go, other half of the glass, you want to get to just below the rip, look that colour change. That's the saddest looking leather I've ever seen in my entire life. But it adds to the illusion, so I'm here for it. Right, okay, so would you like to have a little taste test before oh, yeah. I absolutely neck that? Oh, it's good. Is it good? Yeah, that's... Alright. Yeah. Also super yum. Also super yum. Actually, that's... 
That's really nice. It's always, yeah. um, I always feel like it's got something like sherbet about it. But maybe that's the like lemon. There's a lot more lemon going on mm. in this than so, like a mojito with this wine going across. It's supposed to be quite like pow. Do you think about kind of a classic French 75? That champagne kind of fizzy bubbleness that comes through. That is something you get a lot more with rosé champagne as opposed to Cremant. I feel like all that's missing is my bow tie. <laughs> uh, just, just me sitting on the floor is cocktail free, by the way. I basically want a head mic so I can be like Madonna or Britney, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I find it very odd that she's been treated differently, and I think it's because people want to benefit from her. I look at the cameras if I'm like Oprah. Hashtag free Britney. Um, how, how many times do you even get hashtag free Britney into this conversation? So we have work to do, Matt. Drink free. The best thing about this drink is it's the most rosé sounding cocktail, and it is super banging. Remind version. me of the name you've already forgotten. The Provence Cooler. Perfect, yeah. So this is <laughs> mostly rosé, actually, which makes it quite nice. It's a bit more fruity. I'm going to start off with this vodka. Then, yeah, it was, it was a gift. So this begins with two shots of vodka. <sighs> like with a lot of cooler style drinks, it's supposed to be like a long-term sipper. You know? mm. Unlike your other two, it's not supposed to disappear before the end of the film. The next part, half a shot of lemon juice. Back to your sugar syrup. Vodka, lemon, sugar syrup in there. Next up, grab yourself a blackberry. One of you find it there, and it goes. Take experience, wash it up. So essentially what you're telling me is this is a health drink. We're also now going to take a couple of basil leaves. I'm going to stick those in there as well. So it's also a pizza. Because of the black or Because of the basil. Don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. I don't understand pizza either. In goes some ice. Okay. Cheap. Still in your cocktail shaker. Add your wine. Get yourself a good, flavoury, tasty wine. And you're looking to put in three ounces. Three shots? Yeah. Get uh, a kind of last minute shake. Pop it open. In we go. Look oh. at that. Oh. Ooh. Give it a little stir up. Now, take yourself a little extra basil leaf and yourself oh, a little extra blueberry. Okay, you, you taste your work. This looks incredible. I think a pink drink is just so nice for summer as well. Out of all the drinks, I think this is the most deadly in the sense that it tastes like yeah. juice. It's so easy to make as well. Vodka, sugar, lemon in, rosé in, ice, thing. Nora, I think you'd love this because actually it's basically a health drink. I like, I, I really love this. This yeah. would knock me on my ass. This, I think, is the one that I would probably go back to the soonest because, first of all, it's pink and it feels like it's quite rosé-ish. It is. But it's also really easy to drink. This is also delicious. This I'm wary of. That's, that's... These are our three summer rosé cocktails. The most important thing about getting these right, use better ingredients and you get much better drinks. So a really good quality rosé that goes into these can be really tasty. You don't have to be kind of going out and getting like a 20 pound bottle, but definitely something that you know is going to be like a good yeah. flavour. You also use a little bit of it, so I feel like the thing that I'm actually looking forward to is the residual part of this bottle. What is it? Like, I'm here for a, a good time, long time, but that's a long time. Yeah. I'm coining an expression. I got it wrong, don't worry. And that is Mid the Rolls and Cocktails for this summer. I'm drunk enough for this yeah. summer, to be honest. So. Thank you very much for this. coming to my flat and making me drinks and also Clean up after yourself. Like My pleasure, and I will be able to walk back to the office. See you later, people. Like and subscribe. Oh, we're such influencers now. Like, like and subscribe. <laughs>